Hello, welcome to Hearts Happiness Podcast. My name is Mabry. I'm a trauma transformation coach and mentor. And this is the place where we help you to heal from your past trauma so you can step into your authentic self, the person that you came here to be, and learn how to create a life that makes your heart happy. And then my wish for you is through that journey that you uncover the reason you're here so that you can then go on to heal the world in your unique way and together we can break cycles of trauma. Hello my loves, welcome back for another episode of Hearts Happiness. So I'm super, super excited to have another guest talking all things expansion with you today. So I have been really upping my game with the expansion era content. I spent many years myself on a big journey of healing. I think even whilst you guys have been listening to me, I would say for quite a number of those years, I was actually in my own healing winter. So I was really deep in the principles of healing. And what I found was that I kind of got stuck in there sometimes because I didn't believe I was worthy of having the expansion I wanted now. So having huge shifts and not feeling like I constantly had to sort of chase or fix and I could actually embody the life I wanted now and that would actually create the changes. Living this way, guys, is totally life-changing Like because you're not chasing a goal or an outside validation and you're not kind of in this constant thing of searching for something outside of yourself, which basically is just the pattern that we've been in since we were little. So actually, it's about actually embracing how we want to feel and finding it in the present moment. So I'm definitely way more spiritual than I've ever been, way more woo-woo than I've ever been, which is why I've invited today's guest on, Amy, who is like what I call, like she represents freedom to me. She, for many years, she has grown a big brand. She will tell her story about how she's created a freedom-based life and how she keeps tweaking that to serve herself, how she uses her business as a mechanism to support her freedom-based life, whilst also doing work that she truly loves, making a difference in people's life, being of service, and creating huge wealth as well. And this may sound like a story where you're like, that just could never be me, but I'm here to tell you it absolutely, it can be absolutely every single one of you that's listening, that decides to stop doing what you've always done to survive and actually make a choice to step into a new life and into a new reality by doing things differently. Anybody can do that in any single moment and choose a different path, which is why I have created so many things to help you on this journey of expansion. So just to recap, I've been talking about it recently, but I'm going to go back into it. So we've got the expansion podcast series, which is completely free and it will take you through health and wealth creation. Okay. Then you've got my manifest magic trauma informed framework to support you in manifesting even when you've got had childhood trauma. Because for all of those of you that are doing that, you may have got stuck and are actually not getting results in your reality. I also have magnetic money which is £99 and is a module from my bigger program that's launching later in this year. And it shows you how to manifest money even when you have money traumas or you have a very anxious, insecure relationship with money which panics you and you don't feel like it's going to be there for you. This is going to teach you how to heal that so you can unlock the money flow. So that's £99. Manifest Magic is £33. Or you can get both of them in my new program, Overflow, which starts in November. And in August, it is literally like, I don't know, 75% off. You can get it for £1,111. And then the price will double in September and then it will triple in October. And this is six months with me where we will see each other three times a month. We will speak every single day with a group. We will tap together to release traumas. I will teach you everything I've done to shift out of this constant changing. Um, If any of you guys saw my email on Sunday, which I sent my email list, I shared a bit more deeply what my money trauma has been and what's been going on for me for the last few years. I haven't really spoken about that much. I will do that a, a podcast on that as well. Um, I'll just finish the longest intro first. I'll do that the next time I um, record a single single episode. Um, 
So it's huge, guys. There's so much in it. I have feel like I've just worked out so many things that I want to share with you. So I'm trying to offer it to you at all different price points. Obviously, the six months is that we see each other all of the time. You're going to be daily messaging with me. So we can massively, in six months, transform that relationship with money, unlock the money flow. But overflow is about health and wealth creation because I see lots of people manifesting the money. I've done this myself. I've manifested money. I haven't been able to hold it. And it's also uh, made me very, very sick because of the way I was manifesting the money, which is why I am bringing those two things together, especially for those of you that want want money because you want to do really important work in the world. You want to help people. You want to live in your purpose. You want to create your freedom-based lives. Then these things are going to support you in that process to do that, to manifest, to heal from your past, to become magnetic. So I'm very excited to share that all with you. And I'll be talking more in solo episodes soon. And I am sharing a lot more content around this. So on YouTube, um, I will be, when I get back from the wedding that I have this week, I will be, I promise, regularly blogging on my website about these things. And my emails are like, Sunday emails are like a story now that I'm sharing with you about this because there's just so much for me to share as I'm integrating what's happened with me and how I've managed to really shift past a lifetime of suffering with money and with my body, to be honest. So anyway, I'm going to stop going on and on and on. I'm going to introduce you to Amy, who's a great example of somebody that's living in an expansive life full of freedom. I just want to give you a heads up. We did have a little bit of internet trouble at the end of our recording. You can kind of hear her. She's starting to cut out. So I'm really sorry about that. But I'm going to keep it as it is because it was such a great conversation. I don't think that's ever happened when I've done a recording. It was obviously a very powerful energy. And um, I just wanted you to hear her story, how she managed to create this for herself and how it all started with mindset work and inner healing so enjoy it and I will speak to you in the next episode welcome to the podcast Amy I'm so excited to have you here and to go deeper into your story because I can see it on social media but I wanted to ask you loads more questions so do you want to introduce yourself and explain what it is that you do at the moment which I know is changing yeah so this is the first time I'm actually saying the new thing that I'm doing which is really exciting so I'm Amy and I am the owner of Social Cactus Coaching but also I just launched a brand new brand which is very very exciting so my new brand is called Your Mama Era because I've just recently found out that I'm pregnant and I just feel so excited about this new direction which is helping other pregnant women or people who are wanting to start a family or grow their family and really helping them navigate their pregnancy and set themselves up for an amazing maternity leave as well because I know so many people who are self-employed or business owners they don't believe they can really take a proper maternity leave they feel they've got to rush back into work and there's so many options available for people so I just want to make them aware of what those options are get themselves and their business and their income set up so they can then take that time and enjoy being a new mum and also enjoy their pregnancy because oh my god it's been wild <laughs> so far <laughs> yeah I can imagine so I just love I mean I love this just about you anyway like even before you were pregnant that you always really sh- like mentored and showed as a person of an identity that was building a life to suit her needs rather than you know, I'm sure there's been times where the business has taken over and I know you've spoken about that and how it wasn't in alignment, but how you've been brave enough. I'm sure many times on your journey where you've had to tweak like what you were doing so that it was more in alignment with the life that you wanted to create. And I know you shared more recently that you didn't even know you wanted to be a mum. So this must be fun. Like yeah. that's all come out. Oh my God, I think I want to be a mum now. <laughs> Do you know what's so crazy? When Social Cactus was at its peak in the pandemic, I actually was featured in the press in an article about the fact I was child free through choice and I didn't want children. So my words are forevermore on the internet about how I was never going to become a mum. And here I am now being like fully embracing my mama era and like helping other people do that too. And I'm like, oh, I just, I just love that about life that you're yeah. allowed to change your mind and you're allowed to change course and direction. And the thing that was right for you at the time might not be right for you anymore. And that is 100% how I live my life. It's kind of my compass. I'm a generator in human design. And 
if something doesn't feel good, I cannot continue to do it. I can't put on a mask and just pretend that everything's fine. I'm just not that type of person. So if something no longer feels good or in alignment, I've got to change it. And sometimes the downloads take a little bit longer to come and it's a bit frustrating because you're like, what's the thing? Like, what's this new direction? But it always comes and it always lands. And it's just about acting on that when the inspiration does hit. Yeah. And I love that as well, that you're not afraid because I'm going through like a weird thing in my business right now where I'm changing lots of things because things weren't feeling right. And it can feel quite scary to follow a new path when an old path really did work and yeah. maybe even generated your income and took after your bills. And I can imagine that you've had to do that loads of times, you oh know, because you grew your business so huge and then you decided to make changes to it. Yeah. I actually started out as a social media manager and I think a lot of people forget that that I was never a coach in the beginning I never set out to be a coach that was just the direction that that called to me and felt so right and that I was really good at um so yeah I started out as a social media manager back in 2017 because I came from a background in marketing and PR and I used to do social media for a job and then I left that job to go traveling and again it was that time where had no idea what I was going to do next. I just knew that the right thing would come along at the right time. And I did a plant healing ceremony in um, Peru. I did two, actually. It's called wow. San Pedro. It's a cactus plant, which is where the name Social Cactus actually came from, from drinking. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. And um, it was it was then that I had this idea of, why don't you just, you know, set up as a freelancer and get your own social media clients? Like, I didn't want to go back into an office job. I couldn't imagine coming back to the UK and working for somebody else after having all of this freedom and seeing other people who were working and traveling. And I thought, wow, that looks so cool. And by chance, it's so random. I met this woman in a bar in Guatemala and she had a digital marketing agency. And we just got chatting. I think we were drinking gin and tonics or something like that one Friday afternoon. And she was telling me how she needed help in her business. And I was like, oh, well, maybe maybe I could do that. Maybe I could help her. And that's how it all started from this one chance encounter, from doing this San Pedro plant healing medicine, Social Cactus was born. And it's just been on this crazy, never-ending journey ever since. Yeah. And yeah. it sounds like you're what you're really great at, which is so good that your mind doesn't come in and eat you. Um, but like that you hear that intuitive nudge and then you follow that guidance. Yeah, right? absolutely. Like, yeah, that was the thought of that. Yeah, hundred percent. And like that's how I've made every decision in the business. It comes as an idea or a download or a thought or whatever, and it's just leaning into that and just feeling into it. And does this feel like something that I can really see myself doing? And is this the direction that I'm being called to go into? And sometimes things just unfold naturally anyway, but sometimes like what I've just been through quite recently and making all these massive changes and shifts in the business you have to kind of lean into that a little bit more because like you said, the business had been doing so amazing. You know, we were making multi-six figures every single year for the past, I think it's five years now, we've been making multi-six figures. So to make such huge changes and really scale back and pull back because I knew of this new direction I wanted to go in and being a mom, I knew this couldn't continue to work the same way anymore. And I didn't want it to work the same way anymore. I didn't want to be immersed that much in my business I didn't have the time to be a present mom and that's really really important to me and that's why I'm so passionate now about helping other people do that too it's not always about growing and scaling as quickly and as fast as possible sometimes it is about scaling back a little bit for the different chapters and the different eras in your life as well you know it doesn't mean it's going to be like that forever in a few more years you might decide actually I want to put my foot on the gas again I want to really build things up again and that's cool or yeah. equally, you might still want to have that fast paced business whilst you've been a new mom. Like that's totally up to you. Everyone's different, but there are so many choices for people. And that's why now this new direction, I just know it's 100% the right thing to do. Yeah, I love that. And I guess, you know, you've spoken about before as well, like when you, during the pandemic, when you, so I'm guessing before that, like you've shared stories where you were like, undercharging when you're a social media manager and then when you took your so all the growth that you had to do then to sort of shift to be a business coach how did how have you always dealt with that because you've had so many different like seasons during this journey right I'm guessing like from like the mindset work that you had to do at that point to become the business coach then to have the bigger business then to redefine the business so it was actually set up for freedom and not like just a money machine you yeah. know all of that so how do you how do you cope with those things Oh, God. Well, in the beginning, I had no clue 
no clue at all what I was doing. I'd never had a business before. I didn't know how to charge for anything. I didn't know, I didn't know anything. I was literally clueless and I just learned as I went along. And yeah, my pricing, oh my God, I'm I'm actually so embarrassed about I was terrible. You just didn't charge. I'm like, what were you thinking? Like, mm-hmm. really, Amy? Like, come on. Anyway, I set up this business. I, I was good at getting clients because I was so cheap. <laughs> I was so good and so cheap <laughs> that I was full pretty quickly. And then I realized I'd set up a little bit of a prison because mm-hmm. I was working on call pretty much 24 seven for these clients who were all around the world. And I was sat on my laptop one day looking at my bank account thinking, why are you so busy and you're making less money than you did in a job? Like, where's the sense in that? You can't even afford to go on holiday. You know, you started this business so you could work and travel. You can't afford to travel. Something has to change. And that's when I really discovered mindset work and manifestation. I always, always loved manifestation and the law of attraction. I actually read The Secret, like one of the earlier people who read The Secret when it first came out and it changed my life so much. And that's what set me on this path of traveling and freedom I just didn't really incorporate it into making more money. <laughs> but when I started the business, that's how I started to use manifestation so that, you know, I was able to bring in more money into the business using mindset work, using law of attraction. And just like you've said before, like using that intuition and that guidance to just take me in the right direction. Yeah, sure. And yeah, so I love that. And then knowing when when it's time to change direction, because I know you shared a little bit on social media that, um, you know, you just you were clearly going through some kind of thought process. You know, like you went, you slowed down, didn't you? You stepped back and then you went in inwards. And that, that's like a really important part of the process, which I feel like no one talks about because it's really when you're going on, on, on all the time, you don't really get that moment to just check in if it's right for you and w- what you're feeling like and what comes next because you're just so busy, basically. 100%. And when I made that shift from being a social media manager to a coach, is because I had done that mindset work. I had learned so much about being a business owner. And I actually started out coaching other social media managers because I knew what they were going through. So when I became a coach, it was for something that I'd already had experience in and done. And then it was from there, I was doing so well in the business and helping other people do so well. I started to get requests from other types of businesses saying, can I help them and other coaches and other service providers? And that's another direction I took that I'm going to niche out and help other people do this. And I just got caught in this hamster wheel of work, work, work. Things were going so well that sometimes you don't actually stop to look around and think, is this actually what I wanted to create? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you sometimes look around and think, this isn't what I wanted. Like, yeah, it's been amazing. And it's got me to this point where, you know, we've made over a million pounds in the business, which is just mind blowing to think I used to earn like 25 grand a year working for somebody else. And then in the past I think it's the past five years we've made well over a million pounds. And it's like, what the hell? But with that comes a lot of responsibility and especially being online and being, you know, a bigger a bigger name online, it, it opens you up for a lot of awful things to happen as well. And I think that's the thing that really made me reflect, actually, this isn't the kind of space that I thought it was. Yeah, um, yeah it can be upsetting sometimes. Yeah, and I really had to take a step back and think, whoa, like, do I really want to be involved in this so much because it really affected my mindset and it really, really, really sent me down this spiral of anxiety. Um, I've never had anxiety before and it was the worst feeling ever. It was just awful. It was such an awful time that that's the thing that made me reflect on, right, what is it that I want? And I spent the past two years really figuring that out because I had no idea. I just knew that I had to make changes somewhere Mm. fast, (laughs) but it's taken me two years to come to this. Yeah, but it takes time, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And I think as well, like, um, I remember, you know, I love manifestation. I've been doing it for ages. And sometimes you don't actually really know what you want. So you kind of like, even when I became an entrepreneur, like everyone talks about like the six figure, you know, that's just like life goals. And so I remember that is what I used to focus my mindset and my energy and visualization on. And so it, I created it and it happened. But then I was like, this isn't what I wanted. <laughs> so I'm sick and I'm super busy. And I don't sometimes have time to go to the toilet and like all of these different elements, which I was like, this isn't actually what I wanted, but that's what I thought I wanted. So that's what I created. And then when you start to create it, you start to realize, oh, actually, um, there's a couple of things going on here that I need to work on and the things that I need to heal or let go of. 
and I need to change things in my business here. So it's actually good for me. But you sometimes you don't actually know it until you've created it. And so, and often the times that I've done that, I've created something that somebody else told me to want because it's not actually been my thing. Yeah, 100%. Mm-hmm. Don't you think having a business is the most illuminating oh key journey that you can ever go on? Because it highlights all the parts of you that need the work. And like you said, it is so easy to get so wrapped up in this bubble, this online bubble of that I have to strive towards that thing because that's the milestone that everyone works towards. That's the milestone that means that you've made it. And it's like, says who? If you're yeah. your ass off 24 seven and you're not actually enjoying what you do, is that success? Yeah, because exactly. I am so much more happier now that I've had this time to just really understand myself a lot more, really figure out what it is that I want from my own life. And actually I've lived this super, looks like a very glamorous life from the outside, but I'm the happiest when I'm just at home in England, just doing normal everyday things like yeah. it, going on a walk, like just little things like that. You actually just don't realize how much you appreciate those things when you're living in this, this world for everybody else. Yeah, that's right. And you're like, it's like the highlight reel that you're showing. Yeah. When yeah. really that's like, I, I, and that's what gets me really frustrated about like the online space. It's so much about that. But I remember last year, I was like, do you know what I really want to do? I just want to sit on the sun lounge in my garden and read a book all day. That's what yeah. like, I was like, that is my life goals. <laughs> like basically, I just want that. I want yeah. a day where it feels safe enough to do that. Without like, thinking about content, without thinking about the business, without thinking about yeah. getting back to a client, without thinking about all the other things that come with business, you kind of just want that white space and that mental space to be able to do that without having to think about all the other million things that come with being a business owner yeah definitely Uh, I totally agree with you it's like um and I think again it's because what we're consuming we don't really realize the effect it's having on us and if we see it so many times we're like oh well that's success so I'll just carry on doing it you don't even realize you're doing it sometimes it can be so unconscious which is what I think happened to me and then it's really you know same same as you I'm, I'm having children later in life and I've just had a lot of stuff happen to my health and my body and so when I was trying to create this successful business but I wasn't taking care of my health and my body because the two things just didn't really match together to be honest honest with the way that I was running it, I needed to go much more into my feminine and um, and that was hard for me because I didn't have an example to follow of what that looks like and I've been finding it in different places to create that new vision in my mind so I kind of know oh this is what I'm creating here absolutely yeah Yeah. and I think there is a big big movement happening right now and I've seen so many of the bigger name coaches you know either completely quit their business or really shake things up or scale down because they've realized that their health is their number one priority right now and running the business in the same way, it just doesn't align anymore. So you'll have probably noticed as well online that there's so many people who have spoken out about this and are starting to do mm-hmm. things a lot differently because that time, the pandemic era, where a lot of people did start their business, we didn't have anything else to do. Like all <laughs> we had to do was work. So it was very easy to get wrapped up in that cycle of work, work, work and overworking and just more, more, more. But actually now it's been a couple of years and people have started to realise that they can't continue at that pace any longer. And now yes. they're starting to... It takes its toll. It really yeah, and trying to unravel some of the behaviours and the patterns that they've got themselves stuck in. And as we both just said, like really realise what it is that they actually want from their life and their business and their future and how they can tie it all together. Because don't get me wrong, I am so grateful for having an online business. I'm so grateful for this, for this online space. But it really is about sometimes putting your blinkers on and just focusing on what you want rather than what everybody else is doing. And you're yeah. so much happier when you realise that, you know, do you actually want a six figure business or do you just want to have be able to work part time, be able to take your kids to school, pick them up, have the school holidays off and you'd be happy to earn half of that money? Like it's completely up to you. You can have these big goals and big dreams and big aspirations, but sometimes that's not always what you want to have, because with that comes a lot of responsibility as well. Yeah. And you could also have like an overflow without six figures. Like you could have, feel abundant without it. Like it. Absolutely. Like a lot of people don't even know the numbers, you know, of what their like glamorous life looks like, because it might not even be that number or, you know, it might be. And but it also like for me, like I was like, especially where I've been on this health journey alongside this and um and I, a lot of my clients as well, they're very sensitive. So they're very empathic. They've also been through a lot of trauma. So there's a lot of like autoimmune and illness coming along their journey of 
entrepreneurship. And like you said, business just brings everything up. So that's why it can come up in the body and in, in sickness. And then they're being trained by coaches to be a machine and yeah. not actually what, like, actually, that's not really, when I coach people, I'm like, yeah, I, I understand that you've got that goal in your mind, but your body is like really failing you right now. So I think we're going to have to work on that first. And then we can build that in, in a way that feels really good to you. Because otherwise, what is the point? <laughs> like, really, if it kills you, like, really, what is the point? Absolutely. And I feel there's a lot of similarities between what you do and what this new direction that I'm heading in is. Because if you were to get sick tomorrow, like God forbid you did, if you were to get sick for a prolonged period of time, would your business be able to continue to operate? Would you still be able to bring in income in the business if you had to take a couple of weeks or a couple of months off? And, you know, when people get pregnant, they've got no idea what their pregnancy is going to be like. Yeah. And what a lot of people do is, if they get pregnant, they think, right, I'm going to put my foot on the gas. I'm going to make all of this money really, really quickly so I can take some time off. But then if you're signing up all these clients, when are you going to service them? When are you actually going to work with these clients? Yeah. When, then, when you just had the baby, like, do you have to rush yeah. back to service these clients? And there's so much to think about in terms of making money in the business, how it's going to sustain you for taking periods of time off, whether it's through sickness or, you know, somebody that you need to look after or care for, need your your time and attention and yeah. can your business life, like, <laughs> absolutely yeah and I feel like some people don't really take that into consideration when they are the sole worker in their business and they've got to do everything if they're out of the business the business stops yeah, yeah. and there's just so much that you can do to design it in such a way that it doesn't right and that's yeah. what I'm talking about which I love because that's what I've been working on with my work so I've been thinking, what is what is that future look like when the baby's here? Like what, and not just that, like during pregnancy and things like that. And I'm like, okay, what does that look like? And and so I'm doing lots of things behind the scenes, which is more creating courses of everything that I've learned and like creating funnels and things like that, and scaling my business in a way that can serve more people, but without me. And I've been enjoying it, so it feels so different to create yeah. in this way. But then it's like scary because I don't what well, I don't have I don't know what that next result is or I don't know that or that step and so that's where my mind can sometimes pull me in back again and I'll randomly just go does anybody want any more twins just out of nowhere just because I've, <laughs> like, I've I've just shut myself a little bit for a moment but um yeah and it, that and I think that's really exciting as well because it it brings you back into oh I really enjoy doing this I really enjoy the creating I'm not saying to myself oh, I have to do this and then I can have my dream. I have to do this and then I can rest during my pregnancy. Like, you make it, like the action you're creating right in this moment is to give yourself the pregnancy or the life that you actually want. 100%. And, you know, if people are listening right now and they're thinking about starting a family in the next couple of years, think about how your current business would support you if you were to fall pregnant anytime soon. I mean, you know, sometimes pregnancies come along unexpectedly as well. And it's like, shit, you know, I've got to make a lot of changes and, you know, things have got to happen quite quickly. But if it's something you're planning or you know it's in your future in the next couple of years, you can absolutely put steps in place now that are going to massively support you when the time comes, you know, hopefully if you were to start a family and get pregnant yeah yeah no I love that and um did you would you say that did you start thinking about this like a year before you like how how did it all come about like when you're like okay I need a new plan (laughs) so obviously I just mentioned the fact that I never did want to have children and I (laughs) pregnant I was so scared to tell people because I thought I don't think I was lying and I was like no I wasn't lying it was just a different time I'm gonna have to change my mind just saying (laughs) telling my friends how nervous I was to share this announcement like people are gonna think I'm a liar (laughs) oh no (laughs) but anyway everybody was just so so lovely and I don't think anyone actually remembered um so anyway when I decided that it was time to have a family Chris my partner Chris he also had the same mindset as me, that he didn't want to have kids either. And then when I went through that really weird phase I mentioned a couple of years ago where I had like massive anxiety and I went through like a really rough time, I started thinking about my future and what I wanted that to look like. And I realized that there was something really big missing in my life and a really big sense of purpose that I'd before used my business to fill that void. My business was my baby. My business was my purpose. And actually when I took the business out of it, what was my purpose in life? And I thought, you know, we live this amazing life and we're traveling the world and we're doing all these amazing things, but is that really what I want to do forever? And then this 
like I said, like these ideas just like drop into my mind. And it was all of a sudden like this lightning bolt shock of, oh my God, I think, I think it's time. I think it's time that I actually want to have a baby. I want to start a family. And I thought, well, how am I going to bring this up with Chris? Because he's, he's also felt the same way as me. And then just one day we were having this really, you know, serious heart to heart. And I told him how I felt. And he was like, that's so weird because I've been feeling that way as well. Mm-hmm. So that that was in 2022. So we have had a lot of time to really talk this through, really consider all the options. Is this something that we really want to do? Or is this something that we feel like we should be doing? or We feel like we have to do. Is it because I'm getting older and I feel like my time's running out and I feel like my biological clock is ticking? We covered all of these factors. And went back and forth is this the right thing to do and then we decided last year that yeah it absolutely is the right thing that we want to do um but we just had to get a few things in order first we were still living overseas we were still traveling you know we've got a house in the UK but we had tenants in it we wanted to get everything set first and we also knew the business was a big part of that that really we would have to make some serious changes if I wanted to take a year off, which I do. I want to take a year off from maternity leave and not be in the business for a whole year. So we started to implement changes back towards the end of last year. Yeah. Um, which I think is a really smart move because, you know, yeah. if we hadn't, my pregnancy would have looked a lot different and I probably wouldn't be able to take a year off. Yeah, so. I love that. Like when, you know, I, I as I was saying to you before we hit record, I got pregnant really quickly and I wasn't expecting it because I'm like old. <laughs> and basically I just panicked. Because I was like, and it was the first year I'd gone full time with my business. So I wasn't earning the money that I wanted. So I just panicked. I started to overwork like an absolute nutcase out of fear to bring money into the business. Probably like what you just said. <laughs> yeah, that's what exactly what I did. So that's why when I lost the baby, I was absolutely devastated because I knew I hadn't taken care of myself. And also that the, my body was giving me so many signs to slow down and I just ignored it and everything was okay anyway. Like I made a load of money that, that, that year and I, I didn't have to do what I did, but it was that a belief that I had that I have to do this in order to be safe. And it was just a belief that just ruined everything. And now like looking at like this year where I've really slowed down loads of things and think like, you know, because I'm changing things I'm in a proper transition you know finances and things have been affected by that but I've been like no this is because I'm creating something that's going to be able to work like if I get sick during that pregnancy or if you know I have I do have a bit of a burst of energy and I can do a little bit more here like it's actually much more like like in a way that's built to take care of me like I feel like we should really be building our businesses to take care of us as well not just to serve other everybody else Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, when you are pregnant, I don't know if anybody else has felt the same way as well, if they've been pregnant too, but the exhaustion and the fatigue is something I have never in a million years experienced. I thought I'd been been tired before. Oh no, 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 no. Like even if I wanted to, I couldn't have worked as hard as I've worked in the past. It just wouldn't have been possible. I was so drained from doing even the smallest task. I yeah. really had to take that step back. And thankfully, I'd given myself that space and freedom and flexibility to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. And I spent most of my first trimester on the sofa watching TV because I couldn't, or napping, because I literally couldn't do anything else. Yeah. So I was doing my best. I was serving the clients that I had. And I'd have a coaching call and I'd be like, oh, I need an hour to, to have a nap or an hour to just lay on the sofa and do nothing. I was wiped out. So if I'd have had that mindset of I've got to work, 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 because I am such a worker, I probably would have put myself under that pressure and under that stress. Mm-hmm. And what effect, like you've said, is that having on yourself? What effect is that having on the baby? What effect is that mm-hmm. going to have you moving forward as well? So I definitely think that if anyone is considering starting a family or getting pregnant, that they do think about this seriously now, because yeah. I've seen it happen way too many times. People joining, you know, big masterminds and they've invested a lot of money in this when they find out they're pregnant and then they want to make the most of that investment. So they work, 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 yeah, work. I've done that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, and also, like, I know we're talking about pregnancy here, but also I, I remember speaking to a client once and she had a desire to have her family. She hadn't she hadn't got a business at this point, but she was in her job and it just wasn't working for her. Like for anybody listening as well, like a business is just such a great vehicle to support you and your family and to be able to step away from your full-time job. Like it could, like it could be anything. It could be like you just set up a little course or um, I remember this client that I was talking about. She was like, oh, I could 
I could tutor people. I can't remember it. It was something like that. And she's like, and then she worked out if she did that just a couple of days, she would make more than her other salary. Like, I feel like sometimes we think it has to be a certain way because oh, that's yeah. what we've been shown by our families, by society. But we have so many different options. And I, I love that, you, you know, you're saying that basically what you do is put your mind in such a way that it's relaxed and calm enough that it can give you the little options to move your life in the direction that you want. And people are so busy and so dysregulated that they don't actually can allow that to come through. So you could actually start your business. I've got someone at the moment that I'm working with who, you know, she wants to have another child. And we're, we're already talking about what that can look like. Like she's not even trying or anything because she does, she can tell that being in the corporate world isn't going to work for her either. Yeah. Absolutely. And a lot of people, they wait until they're on the maternity leave to realize they want to leave their job and set up a business. And they try to do that with a brand new baby. Like it would be much easier <laughs> to do that before the baby comes along. So, you know, if it's something that you have been dreaming about, or it's been a goal of yours for a long, long time, that you want to have your own business, you want to have that freedom, you want to have that flexibility. But the thought of staying in corporate, because you want that lovely maternity leave option, is the safe option it's not always because what if you were to lose your job just before you got pregnant what if something was to happen where something fell through and I know this has happened to lots of people before they'd planned to stay in their job because they wanted the maternity leave and, and they wanted to leave after they'd got pregnant but then something had happened and then their job wasn't safe anymore whereas when you've got your own business you are in control of that safety element if you know how to make money in your business and you know how to build a business that works for you and your family nobody can ever take that away from you yeah exactly it's such a it's such a powerful skill isn't it I remember having I just love it that Chris is a is a coach too so he totally understands but my husband is not and so he will be like just, just go back because we used to work together and um, he's like just go back just get like just do that you get your maternity leave like go back to the BBC I'm like I don't think you're when I was sit there and explain it to him, I'm like yeah, so this will happen. I take takes me an hour and a half to get into London. So when am I going to see this kid that I created? Like when yeah. when is that going to happen? And just because it's going to make you feel better, because we know what's going on with my finances, or that it's a job that bores me to death, that it might be not be so challenging. You know, like rather than you know go back, like actually maybe make this an option that's actually good for me. You know, and it's it's just a because but again, it's that that school of thought which is like oh, but you get the maternity leave. But I could make that money in like a week. Like if exactly. I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. When when you really break like it down, yeah. When you really break it down, the maternity leave that you get from being in a corporate job, it isn't that great. No. Like in business, you can earn that, like you said, in a week or a few weeks or a couple of months. And yeah, if you're yeah. in this planning stage where you know that you want to have a family, start a family or grow your family. And you've got that time to really build up that nest egg and you've got time to really set yourself up financially. You can either completely take the time off maternity, completely pause your business whilst you're off. You don't have to worry about anything and you know you're financially secure to support you for as long as you, you want. Um, or there's other options as well, like, you, like you're doing right now. You can automate parts of your business so that you're continuing to make money, continuing to create an income whilst you're off. Or you could also get somebody in the business to run it whilst you're off so yeah. you know you can get support coaches in if you're a service provider you can get other people in to do the work for you that might require some level of checking in and just making sure that everyone's okay or you could actually get a manager in as well to completely take over the business whilst you're off so you don't have to worry about that but and there's other options as well but there's so many options available for people that I just don't think that they're aware of or they think that they can do because yeah. they haven't seen anybody else do it or anybody else talk about it before yeah I, and I what I love about what you're talking about here is and this is what I've been realizing as well is that you get to cr like you had an intuitive idea come through and then you've I know that you did a bit beforehand but then you've created the framework sort of thing so you've put your energy when you've had it prior to getting pregnant to set up that framework so that you were able to so you put your energy and your focus in creating that framework then the idea comes through and then that's like what pulls the money into it. And then you obviously you work on your mindset and your energy. So you're that identity. And then that's what brings it all through. And this is the thing, like you can do that for everything and it, like just create the structure of your house, the way that you actually, which is actually good for you and your, and your life. And like, for me, that's like another thing that I'm working on at the moment is um like I, I've helped so many people self heal that to actually certify them 
as self-healing like coaches so that I can pass people on for one-to-one, but I'm not actually going to do that anymore myself. I just, I don't like, I just don't have the same energy for it anymore. Like it, it affects me, but I can teach all of these ladies that love, love what I've taught them and that really want to be able to share that with people. I can teach them. So that's like my way of, you know, carrying on what I do, but doing it in a way that supports me and my family. And that's like, it feels a bit scary because like, who am I to do a certification? I've got to figure out how to do all those bits. But actually that's, it gets me excited. So I just work through like whatever my mind tells me that it's not possible. And I'm not maybe seeing somebody doing that, but but that feels better. And it's more aligned, especially like with my vision and the things that I wanted to help people with. And it works for me as well. And I think that's like, anybody that's listening you get to create whatever you want in life it's working out those frameworks yeah I love what you just said there like you training people up so that they're at the level that you would expect somebody to be at if you were coaching them and then you can direct other people to them so they yeah. still get one-to-one support but it's not actually you doing the work but you know they're getting the top quality service and top quality coaching and top quality healing so that's yeah. amazing around it yeah yeah and then also it helps my clients because what I've realized by actually becoming a coach like you mentioned I've had to do like so much healing on myself it's actually deepened my healing journey and deepened my tools through actually helping others so the way I see it for them it's kind of the next step for them anyway so that's kind of how you know and but these are things I never would have realized if I was working like a nutcase all the time (laughs) it just wasn't (laughs) coming to me like it wasn't I've had like a thousand ideas just basically I slowed down enough to like listen to them yeah do you know where the idea came from for your mama era the new brand I was brushing my teeth I was brushing my teeth and I knew that I wanted to set up this new page. I knew that I wanted to set up this new brand, but I just had no idea like what to call it or anything like that. And I was brushing my teeth and that's where the name came from. So yeah. inspiration can hit at any yeah. time. And Usually- especially when you're like chilled, basically. Yeah. It, pop into your head. it never comes when you're like, I'm really stressed. I need to come up with like a million pound idea to save, my, to save me out of all these situations. Like you never have a good idea. I've had stuff like that where like literally this just came to me last week. It just in my head just went, you really need to just certify them. And I was like, oh, yeah. And actually like four of them had asked me for it anyway. And I was like, oh, I'm not ready for that. Like maybe in a couple of years, like it kept coming back to me. Yeah. And then when I really had just the space, I was like, oh, I could probably just do that next month. <laughs> I know what I would teach them. Oh, I'll just do that. And then I've started to get a few people signed up for it so yeah it's just and it's just like you said and you just did that the other day didn't you you were like oh I've got a new brand <laughs> yeah because at social cactus coaching I, I it has always been the the name it was social cactus before I became a coach I also lost my Instagram account um which was a whole wild story I got hacked and Instagram deleted my account not the hackers and I never got it back so I had to set up a new page but I couldn't get social cactus again because it was already taken by myself. So I said, potential <laughs> cactus coaching. And that has been the name since, I don't know when it was like 2018, 2019 or something like that. And even when I've changed this new direction, I've still kept social cactus coaching, but something just didn't feel like it was quite connecting because pivoting to help people who are pregnant and you know that, that area is so very, very different. And I built this huge audience of like 14,000 followers and you know all of them are going to be interested in hearing me talk about pregnancy and starting a family and not everybody really wants to see that content you know for some people it can be very triggering or very upsetting if they keep seeing that and I just thought you know what I feel like I need a new platform for this I need a new brand for this I just had no idea what that was going to be and I was like it'll come to me it'll come to me when the time's right and it it did whilst brushing my teeth (laughs) I love it. And then you're just out there just doing really great, funny videos. I love it. Yeah. But it's so important to talk about. I, I think, I mean, like we said here that, I mean, we're talking a bit in, in the theme of pregnancy, but really this is, you know, building it to be whatever. If it's like your family's going through stuff or, you know, you're you're wanting to create freedom in any kind of way or you want to support your health. Like the point is that you are in charge of that. You can create a model that works for you. And then, you know, you using all your skills of like learning how how to sell and market and you know all the strategies that you know and all the mindset work that you know can help people to actually make it a reality yeah a million percent like even when we were traveling quite a lot over the past few years we had set the business up in a way that meant that no matter what time zone we were on we were able to support our clients and that's another thing back in the day when I was on calls back to back and just slammed every single day non-stop 
there's no way I could have gone traveling around the world, you know, I've lived in Dubai, Mexico, Thailand, Spain over the past few years, all very different time zones, but still able to serve and support our clients because of the way that we had set up the business. So what I'm doing right now is just a slight tweak, really, in terms of the audience of what I've been doing for the past. Yeah, yeah, because it's still freedom. Like you've been talking about freedom forever, haven't you? That's yeah. why I wanted you on to talk about that because, and, and just this concept that, you know, when people listen, they feel that they have to do this other stuff and then they'll almost be worthy of freedom. But like you get to decide that you want freedom today and then create a plan, make it happen. And then yeah. in a few months or a month or two months, or, it won't even take as long as you think. It would actually be here in some in some shape and um, form. Yeah, and that's the thing. Freedom, it looks so different to everybody. Like people want freedom for different reasons. Like for me, my whole life has been, I wanted freedom to travel. I wanted location freedom. I wanted that time freedom to be able to jump on an airplane and travel across the world and do all these amazing things. Whereas now my vision of freedom looks very, very different. My vision of freedom now is to be able to provide an amazing life for my future child and be able to have that time to spend with them growing up and really helping them you know, develop into an amazing little human, which I wouldn't be able to do if I'd continued just tunnel visioned on, I've got to work, work, work in this specific way. So it really is about looking at the life that you want to live first. What do you want freedom for? Like, is it because you want to be able to travel? Is it for something else? And then being able to set up your business around that because it is available to everybody. Oh my God, if I can do it, you can absolutely do it too. Like there is no, yeah. no different to anybody else. I'm just a normal person that comes from Leeds that had this dream to create a better life for themselves and you know anybody anybody can do it it just takes a lot of courage and bravery to get started and a lot of mindset work is very very important a lot of failure along the way you know and that's part of it like so much failure but it's like I, the other day I uncovered this huge wound that I had during the full moon and it was like this huge fear of failure and this hit huge fear of rejection which has been playing out in my business and I, just in one moment I was like that is really not relevant now. <laughs> like I used to have it with my dad. My dad is not even alive. And it's just like, you can literally have a little shift like that. And money started to move around just from my, from my realization. And so when you feel like something can't happen, once you clear it mindset wise and energetically and feel safe in your body, like it just, it can be so quick. It really can just from that inner work. Yeah. Everything is a belief. If you believe you can, I believe you can you're right. That's my all time favorite quote. I love it. It's my yeah. absolute and it is so true. If you believe you can create a life of freedom and a business that supports that, of course you can do it. But yeah. if you can't, or you've got doubts, or you think that, oh, it's not going to be safe or you can't do this. Of course, that's going to be your reality. Yeah, isn't? exactly. Because so, that's what you're in alignment with. Like last year, I, I definitely had this belief that I had to work all the time. I had to give loads. That's why it was. Like, I have to overwork. I have to overdo. I have to overgive in order to be worthy of like clients and money and all this ridiculousness. And, you know, so I was, I remember I was doing like weekly sessions in my packages, which they didn't even need. <laughs> it's like too many sessions. Um, and I would be helping them so much. It was just insane compared to this year where basically, you know, I have one day where I have, a couple of calls and I've just reorganized my uh, schedule so it's just not like that and then I have space to create things that are more supportive to my family compared to last year the way that I was running my life was because of that belief and yeah. then when you let go of that belief you get to build it in a different way um, and that's it like whenever my clients are like but it's just not happening I was like because you don't actually believe that you can have it that's yeah. the point. like if you just believed you could have it you would do the things that give you it and then it would just be here and it's yeah. like we resist things so much, but it really is as simple as that. Yeah. And you know what's so funny? Like when you are overgiving so much to your clients, you're creating that codependency that they can't do it without you. When really as a coach, what you're doing is you're empowering people to be able to go out there and have the tools and resources to do it themselves. Yeah. So and we get caught up in our own beliefs so much so that we're actually doing a disservice to our clients because of what we believe to be true and then yeah. when you can you know heal that heal that you're able to then serve them at a much higher level and they're able yeah. to get much bigger and better results as a result of that yeah and they won't need you forever which is great because then they yeah. can deal with other things and I think you know what we just talked about a little bit here was in the online space there's lots of people that aren't doing that work to build their life in a truly like freedom way or an aligned way or 
in a healthy way that's supportive to them. They might be showing a really great highlight reel, yeah. <laughs> which is basically what loads of people do. But then what they teach you is is not that. So like that's it's always really understanding that the person that you want to guide you on your journey, like that's why I always choose people that really embody what it is that I want. Like even when I decided to come to your event, um, I wasn't feeling very well, but I was like, oh, I just want to be around their energy because I just want to see people that embody that, that kind of like we create this, this flexibility. And just from that one day, I had so many shifts and so many realizations and it's just you being you basically, but you embodying it and showing what's possible. And that just little thing tweaked something in my mind. I was like, okay, I can do that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, and it's just, they could just be as simple as that. But I think lots of people get stuck in it sometimes because maybe of what they're looking at or what they're consuming and it's not actually really good for them. Yeah, and that's a really good point that you can have the biggest shifts from going to a one-day event. You know, you can have a massive shift from watching a training or listening to a podcast. You know, people might have had some really big shifts and realizations from listening to this podcast. And it's about then doing something with that and not just sitting with that and thinking, oh yeah, that's great. It's like actually then take the action on that, do something with that and prove to yourself that that shift has happened and it's going to impact you in a really positive way rather than just continuing to do the same thing that you've always done. And I think that's the cycle that people get themselves stuck in and why they don't tend to move forward because they're scared to level up. They're scared to take that next step because you know it will always come down to mindset of what are people going to think of me? What will it mean if then something really great comes from this? You know, Are people going to still want to hang around me I'm like, what my family gonna say you know stuff like that so it really is all about that mindset mindset stuff but until you actually put yourself out there and start to take action on it you're never going to know what the result of that could be mm, yeah it's so true and and I don't know you know the two years that you had that were difficult I, I I've noticed just as as my life has changed and I've created some success or people can see that that's changing that sometimes it's triggering for them and then that you kind of get that reflected back. And as someone that's like, just wanted to create all this good in the world, like it can be uncomfortable when you see how you're changing and you're evolving and that, that the effect it has on other people. So I can imagine you growing this big brand was probably triggering some people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And also, I think a lot of it comes down to identity work as well, which I know is something that you're really big on, too, is when you do decide to make these massive life changes, of course, your identity has shifted along the way for you to make that decision and it will continue to shift and evolve. And some people are not OK with that because they've known you as one version of you. And then when you become a different version of you and maybe your beliefs and values no longer align with them, then the relationships do crumble and do fall apart. And that's just part of life. And you can't continue to do things based on trying to make somebody else happy if it's not making you happy at the same time. So this journey is wild and wonderful. And it really is. sometimes I question, what the hell am I doing? Yeah, I know. But, but you know what I always say is like, I don't know how to get off. <laughs> I don't know how you get off of it. I don't know how you stop it. Because how can you unsee what you see? Like, you just can't. Yeah. Can you? Yeah. Like, that's like, for me, like when my husband says, you just go back. Like that, I that, I just can't do that. It's just yeah. not going to work for me. I'm going to yeah. be so miserable. I'll probably just die out of misery. Like it's just you can't you can't not see it. And I I don't know if you've seen this with clients that sometimes they can be so like holding on to their old identity like mm -hmm. a crazy person. Like they're just yeah. like I don't know why it's not working. Like you're literally like holding like you know you're like squeezing the hands of your yeah. old identity because you don't want to just let go that you're not that person anymore and and this is the way that we can get ourselves st stuck and stop ourselves from like making the big move of like following what's in our heart like I knew I think eight years before I actually started my business that I was supposed to do this like I had this really clear idea that I was meant to encourage people to share their stories because that would help so many people I felt that not enough people were sharing their own healing journey and I, I remember it so clearly then a few people told me it was a really bad idea so I didn't do it and then eight years later I followed followed my heart uh, but oh my god I, I missed out on eight years yeah. <laughs> of doing what I'm doing now you know yeah, and probably eight annoying. years of being miserable and not yeah. enjoying life and that's the thing I am so guilty of holding on to a past identity like I knew two years ago that I should have let a lot of things go 
but I didn't because like you said, things had worked so well. So although, yes, I've been really great at changing direction and pivoting, I've also been really bad at holding on to things because they've worked so well and being yeah. afraid to let go because, you know, that was such a huge part of my life. It, was, it is hard to say goodbye sometimes and it is really hard to cut that cord and yeah. be okay with that. And, you know, since I did decide, right, this has to change and I'm going to change, everything's just felt so much freer and lighter. So if anyone is listening and they're holding on to an old identity because they're scared of what's on the other side, just take the leap. You can always go back, you know? Yeah, it, you, well, you're not going to, it's going to be what, you, to do yeah. it. Just, you won't want to go back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think like, I don't know this year and the way that energy has been, I do feel like it's been like mm-hmm. forcing people to jump into what it is that they're like, into next like I just don't I think for a lot of people listening it's probably really uncomfortable now for you to stay the way you are like we we are meant to evolve like sometimes life will just do it for you like I remember when I wanted to hold on to things like staying in the corporate world like I didn't get like I didn't get promoted or carried on like being in love with someone that wasn't nice to me like the world sorted that out eventually like and why let it get to that stage by by actually getting the universe to force you in like a really crazy way like actually listen and yeah. you know be brave enough and it and like you said before it does take a lot of courage and bravery but so did like learning how to drive once or so did like doing something like that it felt really uncomfortable and then it's just normal yeah think about this how many times in your life have you held on to something for too long and then you've decided to be brave and take the leap and you've said to yourself why did it take me so long to do that like I can't think of a time where I wish that I hadn't made a change faster like I've only ever kind of regretted not making a change sooner I don't know anybody that regrets up leveling like I've never heard anyone say I wish I never did that yeah, yeah, exactly. Or, you know, like what we've talked about is, oh, it's not quite right. Okay, I've got to just change it a little bit. But, oh, I learned so much from it. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes we forget that we're here to grow and evolve. That's what, our, like, our souls are here for. And when we're not doing that, it really makes your life really quite miserable, basically, because you can feel exactly you, feel like you can feel like you're in the wrong place, basically. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. So I have absolutely loved this conversation. Is there anything else that you want to share about this whole journey and any any anything that you think that could support anyone that's either like about to jump into a new change and like completely changing the framework, whether it be pregnancy or something else? Yeah, I think it's just getting really clear on your vision and why that's really important to you because that that's the thing that's going to keep you driving forward it's not it's not going to be the easiest Got that vision in your mind of what it is that you want to create and why that's so important to you that will keep you going when things feel a little bit challenging or things aren't working out exactly how you imagine them to you know it, that that's the thing that's going to keep you on track and heading yeah. towards that goal so there's so many amazing resources out there wonderful and it's focused like you said earlier it's like focus on your vision just remember your vision and just keep taking action towards that i'm Absolutely. basically losing my internet now anyway so did you want to let everyone know how they can find you and the ways that like you know you're helping i know you're figuring it all out at the moment but what what they need to do next to see hear more from you yeah, so I've just started a brand new Instagram account and I would love for you to come and say hello over on there. So the handle is at your.mamaera. Come and say hello on there. Come and say that you've listened to this podcast and I'd love to have a chat with you over on that account. Or you can follow at Social Practice Coaching as well. But let's focus on the new one, <laughs> your.mamaera. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just to see the fun that you're making out of creating this new new life, like new new journey, new pathway. Absolutely love talking to you. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us. And I'll make sure I pop all the links into the episode notes. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Don't forget to follow, subscribe, tell your friends about the podcast and leave a review. Good or bad, I want to hear what you think. And make sure you follow us on Instagram, hearts underscore underscore happiness. And I will see you in the next episode.